Welcome back to Source 2 Crash Course. This is Sammy Chimona Hihi Aliyubi, uh, the Eagle One development team. I want to go ahead and uh, introduce you today to the first of uh, many different material tutorials that is going to cover the basics. Now, if we take a look here, orange and uh, gray is beautiful. If you can build something that looks good with orange and gray, hey, you're in a pretty good spot uh, when you do eventually do your art passes to make this really pop out. Uh, but uh, I want to go ahead, I'm going to use the Alex... Uh, materials that are available for this one i'm going to come on here let's go to a uh, tile I, I like this one a uh, tile floor there's going to be a variety of different uh, materials you can type them in up there i'm going to choose this one and we'll explain what all of these mean too as well uh, as we continue to go through okay with this material selected in the active material uh, selector i can go ahead and click on any face and i'm going to press shift t okay shift t is going to take the material and it's going to apply it you could drag it if you want to, but Shift-T happens to be easier as you can select multiple faces and uh, press Shift-T to apply it. Okay, and uh, now that we have it applied, uh, you you're going to begin to notice how extremely valuable it is to be able to build everything on the grid as uh, if you're building everything in uh, units of eight uh, and it's on the grid you're going to be able to find uh, you know units of eight to four at the very very lowest is really going to help you align some of these textures uh, that <clears throat> will end up later uh, proving uh, to help with the workflow that you have already optimized for i'm going to switch up uh, the uh, texture on the roof uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's open up our uh, material browser uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, look for a tile. And if uh, I like to have my material browser open in another window, I do have a multi-monitor set up, so it is uh, available uh, for me to use. If you don't have this, it may be a, a small window down here. That's fine as well. I'm going to apply this on the uh, ceiling. It looks uh, <clears throat> a little different. And we're just going to try to keep it uh, as uh, uh, uniform as possible in some sort of theme. All right, now, um, now let's go ahead and let's figure out these walls. Okay, these walls, uh, I'm going to use another texture for these walls. Uh, let's come over here. I've got a particular one. Uh, let's go to distillery. And when I type in distillery, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this set here in particular. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for the walls, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this texture. Okay, now this texture, uh, it is technically a, a hotspot texture, but what I'm doing is I'm going to show you how uh, some of these textures, if we want to use it and line it up to the world grid, it's actually going to help us out. So all I'm doing is I'm selecting these faces and I'm pressing Shift T. So select the faces that you want. I'm just going to select all of this and this and this and all of these faces as well. Yeah, I can alternatively hold down Alt and hold down shift, double click. And every time I double click on a face, it's gonna select all the faces on that object that's parallel to it. Uh, so I've now selected all of them, press shift T and it's gonna apply it right away. Now, <clears throat> on first glance, this is already shaping up and looking a lot nicer than before. Uh, there is, however, some issues that we have here uh, with the walls uh, and, and how the repeating of these walls is starting to become uh, somewhat obvious. Now, there's a couple of ways that uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to fix this in a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, for right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you why it's important that we tried our best to keep this on the grid. Notice that when I select this face, this is also on the grid, 64 by 96. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to move using this uh, tool set over here. I'm going to shift it to the left and right, and I'm going to try to match it up. Notice every time I move it, it's going to be based on this grid size. And since it's on the grid of 8, each of these tiles is actually exactly 8 units. So now... I can go ahead and just move it to where I want. Okay, that looks better. Uh, <clears throat> same with uh, this one. This one, it actually matches. I like this uh, seam right here. This one uh, matches as well, although this uh, going into here, uh, you know what, that might, uh, we might be able to get away with that for now. Um, <clears throat> what I'm looking at, though, and I'm concerned with is this long wall where I have uh, two walls, and I can see there's a little bit of repetition that's uh, beginning on both sides. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, select these edges and i'm going to create a loop cut okay, select them and press v 
Okay, V is going to make that cut right down the middle. And now I can go ahead and uh, I think I can play with this a little bit uh, to try not to make it look like it's repeating as much. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and take this. Uh, notice as well here, this isn't matching up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this shift, shift it around and uh, right there. Okay, no, perfect. So it looks like actually every tile is four units. So if I really wanted to get down here to four units, okay, now I can get really, really as accurate as I want. So this helps out tremendously. Uh, for right now, we're just going to go ahead and move it to that spot. I'll go back to eight uh, since um, I'm not going to go on a per tile basis. All right, so I've got this matching over here. It's matching over here. Uh, here it looks like we have some looping. That's fine. Uh, and uh, later on, I'm going to show you how we can further take care of how this uh, tiling that looks like it has some uh, continuity issues will be remedied with what we call a blend texture. And uh, that's something that is going to be in the upcoming tutorial. But for right now, let's go ahead and move on to the stairs. Okay, These stairs, I want to use concrete for them. <clears throat> concrete. There's a variety of different ones. I'm going to type in concrete, though, and I want uh, uh, specifically trim, and I'm going to type in HS for hotspot. Okay, HS hotspots, here's what this is. I'm going to select this one right here. And if you look at the active material, you'll notice it's cut up in, in a bunch of different ways. Anything that's a hotspot material, if you apply it regularly, if I press Shift T, you're going to start to, to notice that there's hash marks that don't quite line up or, or, or should be there. So if I go ahead and I, I try to show you this part, you'll start to notice these cuts uh, are starting to randomly appear. And that's because this isn't supposed to be used uh, in this manner. I, I shouldn't use hotspot textures as I would a world texture. And here it's actually even much easier to show why I shouldn't do that. Now what I'm going to do is actually instead, I'm going to press Alt-H when I select the face. This is Apply Hotspot. I'm going to do it to a couple of these. Let's compare how it looks. A hotspot texture that is hotspotted on there as opposed to being applied normally through Shift-T. The engine will automatically take a look at this face it's going to look at the material. It's going to find the cut that makes the most sense, and it's going to apply it. So if I want to apply a hotspot texture on all of these, select all of them and press Alt-T, it'll apply that hotspot texture across all of their faces. Now, this is a really, really useful tool. Let's go see if I use the hotspot texture over here. Notice how it creates what looks like a concrete block as opposed to a non-hotspotted texture next to it. So hotspot textures are really a great way for us uh, to be able to work. Now, I'm going to show you another application for them here as well. Okay, uh, I'm going to select these floor panels. Okay, and I can also do that by holding down Alt. And if I want to add it, Shift, double click. And I'm going to press Alt T. Okay, look at that. Hotspot textures are going to align perfectly. Now, if I didn't press Alt T as a hotspot, if I said align it to the grid, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, this does not look appealing at all, but one simple gesture, and right away we've turned this into something that looks a thousand times better. Okay, so we can also apply hotspots uh, uh, individually uh, to each face here. So for this hallway, I might be tempted to build hotspots. But I want to show you another trick we can do. Instead, let's go ahead, let's grab the same faces. And uh, when we grab a bunch of faces and we press Alt-H, now we're telling it apply the hotspot across the entirety of these faces. So let's compare it. A hotspotted texture across all of these faces, and it's applied as one hotspot as opposed to each one individually hotspotted. So this right here is when I press Alt-T. This right here is if I press Alt-H. Now you'll notice if I press Alt-H, it's going to cycle through a couple of different hotspots. And that's because no matter what you do when you apply a hotspot, there's a couple of different variations. And if you're not happy with the variation that you have, go ahead and press that hotspot texture again. All right. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video on the materials and the basics of applying materials. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue with our second part by finishing up the rest of this room and uh, adding a little bit more spice.